we want to find the 35th and 82nd derivative of f of x equals sine x. To do this, we'll find several derivatives, notice a pattern that will allow us to find the 35th and 82nd derivative. So if we know f of x equals sine x, then the first derivative, f prime of x, is equal to cosine x. The second derivative is equal to the derivative of cosine x, which is equal to negative sine x. The third derivative is equal to the derivative of negative sine x, which equals negative cosine x. And now when we find the fourth derivative, we use this notation here where we put a four in parentheses here in the exponent position. So this is the fourth derivative of f of x, which equals a derivative of negative cosine x, which equals negative negative sine x or positive sine x. So notice here the fourth derivative returns us back to the original function f of x, which means from this point, our derivatives are going to repeat. For example, if we want to find the fifth derivative, this is equal to the derivative of the fourth derivative, or the derivative of sine x, which is the same as our first derivative, which equals cosine x. And therefore, the sixth derivative is equal to the derivative of cosine x, which is the same as the second derivative. So we have a negative sine x for our sixth derivative. The seventh derivative would be equal to the derivative of negative sine x, which is the same as the third derivative. So the seventh derivative is negative cosine x. And the eighth derivative is equal to the derivative of negative cosine x, which is the same as the fourth derivative, sine x. Now that we've noticed a pattern here, let's see if we can generalize the pattern to find the 35th and 82nd derivative. Notice how we're looking for a derivative that would be a multiple of four. The derivative would always be equal to sine x. So we can say the four nth derivative of f of x is always going to equal sine x as long as n is a positive integer. Now let's take a look at this row here. If we're looking for the first, fifth, the next would be the ninth, thirteenth, and so on, derivative, the derivative would always be equal to cosine x, which means if the derivative is in the form of 4n plus 1, the derivative is always going to equal cosine x. Notice how the first, fifth, next to be the ninth and thirteenth derivative would always fit the form of 4n plus 1. Next, notice how the second, sixth, the next to be the tenth, then the fourteenth derivative would all be negative sine x, which means the 4n plus 2 derivative of f of x is always equal to negative sine x. And then finally, we have the third, the seventh. If we had four, we'd be at the 11th derivative. Then the 15th derivative and so on would always be negative cosine x. So if we're looking for the 4n plus 3 derivative of f of x, it'll always equal negative cosine x. Now that we've determined the pattern of the derivatives, in order to find any derivative, we just need to determine which form the derivative fits. So for example, in order to find the 35th derivative of f of x, we want to determine whether 35 fits the form of 4n plus 1, 4n plus 2, 4n plus 3, or 4n. One way to do this would be to take 35 and divide by 4. So if we take 35 and divide by 4, there are 8 4s in 35. 4 times 8 is 32, and we subtract we have a remainder of three, which means 35 is equal to four times eight plus three, which means 35 fits the form of four n plus three, and therefore the 35th derivative is equal to negative cosine x. 
And now if we want to find the 82nd derivative, we want to determine whether 82 fits the form of 4n plus 1, 4n plus 2, 4n plus 3, or 4n. So again, if we need to, we can take 82 and divide by 4. This is pretty straightforward. There are 24s in 82. 4 times 20 is 80, the remainder of 2 which means 82 is equal to 4 times 20 plus 2. So 82, of course, fits the form of 4n plus 2, which means the 82nd derivative would be equal to negative sine x. So once we've noticed this pattern, it's a pretty easy process to find any derivative of f of x equals sine x. We could use a similar strategy to find higher order derivatives of f of x equals cosine x. I hope you found this helpful.